Well, hello and welcome back to another video. Um, this is a totally unplanned video. Um, and obviously I realise this will only be of interest, probably um, if you might have one of these or buy one of these or or just want to look at it for interest. Um, but um, the other evening um, I was, as some of you might know, I've got a huge collection of reel-to-reel -reel tapes. Um, that I'm slowly wading my way through listening to when I have a few spare moments. Um, my choice of reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder is an early 70s uh, Sony Model TC-377, uh, which has proven very reliable, I have to say, until that is the other evening when I was listening to a um, a very ancient... 1954 tape um, we sadly I went away for a few minutes um, and when I came back the tape had stopped going around the spools <laughs> and had all collected on the pinch roller of the tape recorder so I knew I had a problem um, so without further ado I don't want to ramble on on this video um, I'll turn the camera around and explain what I think the problem is and how I'm going to solve the problem or repair the issue. So there we go, there's now um, Sony TC377 in shot. Hopefully you can see that okay. Um, as I say, this, this spool that winds the tape round has stopped moving round. And um, there's many, many good um videos out on youtube about you know renovating restoring repairing one of these but i found i found a big a bit found it a big letdown because nobody in the videos and perhaps i didn't go through them all because there's an awful lot this is quite a popular vintage tape recorder to still use but nobody in their videos explained how to get this front cover off um so that's the main reason i'm doing this video this is to show you actually how to get into the mechanism and um, diagnose what problem you have so first of all um, we take the head cover off and that just slides off like that um, we'll put that over there i have a little tray to put all the screws and bits and pieces in so it keeps them all together uh, secondly, we want to pull that knob off there. These um, knobs um, there want to come off. So that's got our knobs removed. <laughs> it's a bit of a carry on joke that could be, couldn't it? Um, and um, then we want to uh, get some right screwdrivers on the side of the cabinet and if we turn it round to show you so to show where i mean each side there's two screws two phillips on on like with like um chromed cups that they fit into these are the chassis fixings so basically at the moment in time we don't want to take as my light see we can get the light up a bit um, no, it doesn't want to hold up today, does it? Um, we don't want to take the whole um, chassis out necessarily. We don't know at the moment because we don't really know what the fault is. All that we know is this, you know, this spool has stopped taking up the tape or won't go round when in play mode. So all we want to do is just loosen just unscrew not take them right out they are quite long those um, chassis if I just come around the other side there and we just undo those just slacken them off a little bit give us a little bit of room there that should be fine in fact that's probably too much I'll just turn that one in a little bit too much some reason that cover has come off that knob but never know we'll worry about that later then um i shall need some old 
workshop glasses on here. Um, then you'll see we have two screws, one there, another Phillips, and one there. So two smaller Phillips screws that need to come out. And they have, these have got little washers behind them, so we'll keep, keep those on. I don't know where this original, this was. I didn't actually um, originally rest restore this or refurb it. Um, I'm not really, as you know, I do televisions and old radios. I've never done a lot on, on reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders. So this is all a bit of a new area to me. But um, then you'll see we have another couple of um, Phillips type screws up here and these have like little um, cup cup washers as well so we'll keep those on keep it all together and then there is a screw just where my screwdriver is going into there and you've got to watch this one because you don't want to drop this one in the mechanism as he goes and does wouldn't be the end of the world at the moment in time because we're going in there but there we come and that has got a washer on it as well so we'll keep that together whoops nearly threw it on the floor and um and you think, right, that's fine. The front cover should come off, but it doesn't. And this is what I found, um, let a lot of these other videos down that were telling you about repairing these or how to get in to repair them. We have this uh, pause lock, which slides down and locks it um, in pause mode. Um, and I couldn't find out how how you got this off or how that you know come off but um it is a after speaking to my friend who knows a lot more about tape recorders than i ever will do it is a reverse thread on this so it's a left hand thread so what you mean what it, it's um um righty tight lefty loose but in this case it's righty loose so you've got to you might even have to i have broke this off with a pair of little pliers you might have to get a little pair of pliers on there and then you can undo it and it does have a thread and unscrews and that was throwing me because i couldn't get the front off and now our front plate should just, he says, <laughs> oh no, 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 I've forgotten something. There you go, you see. There we go. Um, I now need a, a little pair of pliers. We took the head cover off early on. There are two pins up here that hold that head cover. Here's one. And they have to, they also unscrew, like so. There we go. And now that should free our front and hey presto, we can give that a good clean. Um, there's lots of bits of, um, you know, the, the trouble when you play old tapes through, you get a lot of bits of old tape dropping off and that, that's, we might, we, we might even, I think we could even wash that. It's all plastic. Um, we'll let, let, leave it down there for a minute. And I'm hoping, oh yeah, well, there's, there's our problem straight away. Um, can I zoom in a little bit on that for you? Um, there's our problem. We have a, let's just, we have a broke, can you see that? A broken um, drive belt, as I thought it probably was. Um, the big drive belt around this um, pulley wheel has, has broke. Strange, because it looks, 
it's a very very clean brake i mean these these were new belts a few years ago so that hasn't lasted particularly well um but hey ho there we go and um my goodness you can see it's certainly dirty in here it's it's, it's a it's a real good chance to give it a um can i drop the camera down a little bit more um just zoom out a little bit no wrong way it's an ideal chance obviously it's very very dirty all around here and obviously this will be an ideal chance to um give it a thorough thorough clean out um probably with a little brush i'm not i'm not going to go overboard with this you know um basically all i want to do is to repair um the new drive put a new drive belt on which I have a kit of drive belts here. Um, I think the other one should be okay. I, I have got every drive belt needed, but it's just the big one we're going to need. Now, as you can see, the problem is um, this belt goes uh, to this flywheel down here. Um, so basically we now have to move this panel um, and I think we'll get a bit different screwdriver for that. Um, so there should be four screws, which are one, two, three, and four. Um, so let's remove those and see how we go on. Put those in a, where we know we are. Uh, there's another one, two. There again, they have, um, this one has a spring spring washer and also a big a bigger washer behind it so that's the middle one if we remember the middle one has a spring washer as well because some of them just have ordinary just oh no they all they all they do they all got two washers on so there we go that's three and then we got one down the bottom here now now we could go on and remove that that play those play um you know tape heads there but i don't really want to do that i think that bit should now kind of to some degree come out like that yeah there we go um so hopefully that might get us access into um and i think this just comes off which it does and as you can see it's um we will give that a clean up because there's a bit of oil on that and a bit of a you know um so i shall clean that up and have a rejig and then we'll try and install our new belt isopropanol um wipes so if we take one of those off they're just like um Oh my goodness, they're not very big, are they? <laughs> that was me thinking it was going to be a massive thing. And look at it. And um, can we just get that in that? Um, I just want to see if I can clean that. Make sure that pulley there is quite clean. And that's getting in there lovely just to get any remnants of rubber the, these belts haven't been on long as i say so this is not like obviously if if you'd bought a machine say off ebay that was a totally unknown probably hadn't been used in many many years you would be wanting to take all this um strip it all down thoroughly clean it um you know before you um thought about using it um as this has been, I've been using this machine for four years now, um, and it's never let me down until this point. Um, that seems pretty clean actually there. So I, I don't think we're going to worry too much about that. So our new belt um, seems to go around that point there. It's got to come through that, I've got to open that clutch back there and then we have to put our 
and I might just see if I can find a little bit of grease and rub on that shaft there um, although the, the shaft is beautiful and clean and um, I think that is like a little um, oil washer which seems quite damp still so I'll see if I can find a little bit of grease anyway not next to anything clear uh, smear of little grease on that that is an oil like um, for, um, felt washer there um, so now we've got to get <laughs> got to get this back in um, on our pulley then we've got to pull this front up and get the pulley wheel slid back in like so <laughs> you need about you know 300 hands to do this um, now there is a little metal brake uh, with a felt pad on it which is quite irksome because it can get in the way and you can get it stuck it's just there it's like a bit of clock spring so just make sure you pull that back and then we want to realign where obviously where our screws go um, and make sure we're all engaged in that you might have to pull it down a little bit i think what i'm going to do is just temporarily put that one in very loose there to stop it springing kind of out again whether that's going to be a good thing or a bad thing i don't know at this time but having never done that i don't know now where do we want to align uh, that's looking as though we might be somewhere close there um, so let's get another little screw there and put in i think in the winter time i might take um give this a strip down again and a real thorough clean and uh, a fresh grease up i mean it is very very dirty in here um i mean that almost looks like grass there lord knows where that's come from but we won't worry about that now i'm going to give that a good brush a little light brushing and cleaning i'm going to clean the heads while i've got good access to them um there again with the isopropyl alcohol i clean um those um won't tighten those all those up till we've got all four in so those go back just in the holes that we took them out of pretty straightforward that is and then we will just tighten them up not too tight at the moment um so there we go that's those and hopefully oh that looks quite promising, doesn't it? That looks like we might have a belt. I don't know whether I've got that one quite right, where there's a pulley at the back there. It should have gone on to. But time will tell on that, won't it? We shall see anyway right so hopefully we're getting somewhere um, back together now <laughs> aha we've lost it we've lost a little clip down there ah blow that blow that blow that so we've got we've got to undo that again i've, I've left the rod off it's a good job i noticed that i've um never mind you have to keep experimenting with these things don't you um i think we're gonna to have to take all four screws out again um because we have a a connector rod there <laughs> that um i didn't take out can we no we're not going to be able to don't want to go and force anything there um 
So there's our four screws whipped out again. We have to get that in there. Now, can we sort of just prise that out without everything flying out? Out this there, it's coming. Uh, and that has to go into there, I think. Not the easiest of places to get to again, is it? There we go, I think we're in now. And now can we get that clipped back together? It's a question of probably pulling that drive belt in back into where we want it again. Shall we get that one screw? That seemed to work okay before, didn't it? If we get one of the screws in, as a starting point. Just a little bit there. Now we can see if we can jiggle this back into, so it sort of clicks in as it did before. No, it still wants to come out, that blessed thing. in and our little rod is locked in place there now so that should he says should be okay if we can get our screws back in there that's one there we go And where's the bottom one, which is there? And there we go. So hopefully that is the drive belt replaced there and we've got it all back in the right place. Um, and hopefully, he says, hopefully touching wood, that should work. So I suppose really now, um, let's put those meters back up there. They diddle about a bit, don't they? And drop out at the drop of a hat. Um, I suppose the thing to do really is um, to put some power to it and see if it'll play a tape. So um, we come to the moment of truth. Um, oh, we're on. Um, if we just try and put a, a tape on it. Um, one thing about these Sony reel-to-reels is a lot of people, I think, I often see them for sale on eBay and they say, it doesn't work. And they perhaps haven't got tapes to try them. And unless you put a tape um, through like this, the motor won't start. So you'll, you'll never know. Um, you know, I often think um, that people think it doesn't work. There we go. <laughs> Real to real tapes, you can have hours of fun with them. You can indeed. Let's see if we can get that round. I don't want to hook it through. There we go, I think we're on now. So here we go. Um, we'll put up, just put the knob back on, um, which goes, uh, where does that go? That engages into that hole, hopefully. There we go, let's try it, play. Oh, look at that, yay. Um, and there we go, we're playing again okay. So that looks fine. So, uh, job done. Hopefully, um, 
this is a tape that got damaged um it was an old, a very old um organ broadcast of george blackmore in 1954 so i'm going to have to try and piece it all back together again and make something of it because it was quite a good recording actually it was uh, at the capitol cinema in aberdeen um but we seem we seem seem fine there don't we doesn't seem to be stopping very quickly but we won't worry about that so I'll clean the front up and put the front back and then come and just show you how to put the how to put the front cover back on and I don't want this this is getting far too long as it all as all my videos seem to do so um right so I've um <clears throat> washed the front uh, I do find when putting the front back on it's probably as easy to lay the machine down that way and obviously then it's just a reversal of what we did the little um, cupped uh, screws go at the top there the outer edge just kind of fits within the cabinet there's a slight groove there and it just kind of lays in there um it's not not the best fit by a long way um it's sort of very much you know so there's our other one with our little cupped um I'm gonna tighten those up fully and then our two little um, kind of round headed uh, Phillips screwdrivers they go screwdrivers screws I should say or they are kind of a, a threaded bolt to be honest um, they simply go in there like that just tighten down not too not overly tight and like we've got one this side as well. It's just clicking into the into the groove there. I mean I think we're okay. There we're all pretty much we stand it up now again you'll see it certainly looks a jolly sight cleaner on the front in the right there we're okay there that all functions the flock functions um, and then hopefully we can tight we can then tighten the chassis don't forget to tighten your um, chassis clips back up Kind of grips it all into the um, cabinet there and um, I'm pleased with how well that's cleaned up it had got it had got so filthy running those old tapes through there so that is that is brilliant just to have done that to it but as I say um, there again um, our two little I think that did have a washer on it this one because this side is cracked on the um, on the plastic there so our two little fixings yes that's going in there again you don't want to get these overly tight but you might just need a um, small pair of pliers just to give those a little tweak up they do open up with a screwdriver you know they are like split um, and you might have to reopen them up after it, it only holds the um, cover on to the cover on to the 
tape heads there. That still doesn't want to know very well. Why is this? Looks pretty good to me, lining up. Oh, there's a screwdriver on the floor. I won't worry about that. There's the washer on the floor. There we go, I think we're off now. We're off into the... So that might just need a little bit of opening up again because we've, we've squished them down a little bit but yeah you can just be careful and slide a little screwdriver in there and just open that up a tad there like so just so the cover doesn't slide off or slide onto it you know easily you can close those up or open them up whatever um we have our um screw to get in there now a little little tech tip here if you've got a screw um that you don't this was taught to me by a very old engineer um for anyone that does radios if you've got one of those um really let's think of a radio a bush DAC 90 has quite a few um, horrible wax uh, paper capacitors that actually you very often find, like a lot of radios of that period, there's obviously wax oozing out of one side when you change the capacitors. And that wax is very sticky. It's very handy if you've got one of those old capacitors, um, which I haven't at the moment, he says around here. Um, uh, take a little, just a little, just a faintest little dab of that wax on your top tip of your screwdriver and then stick your, um, you know, screw onto your screwdriver. The wax will hold it and it'll give you a, a much better shot of getting it in the hole where you want it without it falling down into the machine or radio or television. Another modern equivalent, which I shall probably use in a few minutes when I can find some, is a bit of blue tack. Just put the faintest little bit of blue tack on the tip of your screwdriver and then, you know, put your... Uh, so, um, there we go, I've got a little, got a little bit of... Um, got a little bit of blue tack there, just sticking it on the end of the screwdriver. That's it. Press the old a bit of fluff on it we don't want that do we now and then oh, i better have some old workshop glasses which come out the 80s um i look like one off one of those 80s tv programs with these on and then just gently screw that in um i don't think you want to screw that one particularly tight you can just pull a bit of uh, blue tack off or a bit of wax because that's on plastic there um, so I'm not going to over tighten that that would just go a little tweak with that one and there we go that's the um, job done it's just a question of then of, of refitting the um, that aligns into a hole so you've got to get that pretty much there we go And it's a question of putting the other, I think one of these knobs um, kind of disintegrated a little bit when we, um, when I took it off. Uh, that's better, it goes in, ah, oh, that's it. It's, it's only, it's only the, the top of the, the shell of the knob come off. It looks like it's been glued before. So um, it's just a question then of, um, if we turn that to there, that should go on to about there, that's it. Yep, that's okay, minimum, maximum and um, we go down to there 
There we go. Minimum, maximum. Yep, that's fine. And then, whoop. If we come down to there. No, that's not going to... That doesn't want to fill it. Try in the bottom one. See if that's any better. There we go. That's lovely. Yep. And this is the one that really could do with a little bit of glue, but we won't worry too much about that because I never use these knobs um, normally. So there we go. Minimum, maximum. Fine. There we go. Uh, then we've got our critical piece, which made me do this video in the first place. Um, and as I say, don't forget, this is a left-hand thread. So to tighten it up, you're going to um, go the opposite way. And that threw me for a long while. Um, so there we go. And I'm not going to over tighten that. I'm not going to put pliers on it or anything. And um, there she is. She's back to normal. Um, might do a little bit of a, a, you know, a video of it later on running, um, as I say. But um, for now, that's it. Could have dusted those a bit better, probably. But I'll get a duster and uh, make sure all that dust is out of there. Surprising where the dust gets in. It's absolutely amazing in this old equipment. But there we go. Um, as always, uh, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you've enjoyed, as always, coming with me, um, diddling about in the workshop, trying to repair this old stuff. Um, I don't know, like I said, I, I have not a lot of experience on reel to reels. I was using them as a child from about nine years old we had a grundig tape recorder and i started recording things off the radio on on that at nine but as to repairing them i haven't you know um they went very out of vogue and very out of fashion um but i think they have a machine like this which is still very useful with the with the three speeds uh, the three speed tapes um it's very useful now and obviously this needs um some kind of amplifier to plug it into it hasn't has got an amplifier as such although you can use headphones and get um sound through it that way a little bit of sound which is handy if you're you know um using it into a computer to copy tapes and then digitalize those so as always thanks for watching please do like comment subscribe and uh, and they say this video was really made if anybody else has a belt break and they're a bit foxed of how to get this uh, outer cover off and um because i was and as i say um so i hope that explains that and um very easy job not a difficult job to change all the belts really on a uh, sony tc and that would go for the tc 366 the tc um, 377 and i think there's one or two others in that range as well that are all very similar so as always, thanks for watching and um, I'll catch up with you soon. And um, as always, best wishes and bye for now. Services Calling, a program devised and produced by the services at home for the entertainment of their comrades overseas. The Royal Air Force presents another in the program series introducing well-known cinema organists now serving with the RAF. Today we welcome to the organ console one of Britain's best-known organists, LAC Dudley Bevan. Here he is to play to you for the next quarter hour. Hello services, this is Dudley Bevan sending you greetings wherever you may be. And now I'm going to play for you a medley of popular tunes which I hope you'll enjoy. <laughs>